Welcome to the EAUN podcast edition of EAU Podcasts. In this first EAUN podcast episode, we are delighted to be joined by Stefano Terzoni, researcher in nursing at the University of Milan LA Statale, Italy, and a chair of the special interest group on continents of the EAUN. Also Serena Marucci, a urologist experienced in urological rehabilitation and treatment of urinary incontinence. Together, they will have a frank open talk about a very common problem of urinary incontinence and most of all about possible solutions to help people improve their quality of everyday life. Join us as we embark on this informative journey. Welcome to this podcast of the European Association of Urology Nurses. I am Stefano Terzoni and I'm here today with Dr. Serena Maruccia, urologist and expert of urinary incontinence issues from Italy. Welcome, Serena. Hello, everybody. Thank you for the kind invitation. It's my pleasure to have you here, Serena. And my first question is, why is urinary incontinence still a taboo in 2024? Because it is a shame. What social life can have a person with a bad intimate odor? What is the quality of sexual life? Emotional maturity is often not enough to deal with such intimate suffering. Talking about a cancer is easier. Talking about a diabetes even when due to bad habits, it is not cause of shame. Sick people are pity. People sympathize with them. Incontinence is a silent suffering concerning intimacy, experience as a personal fault. People live incontinence as a stage of aging, a traveling companion, a painful stick along the way. Being incontinent in the is normal, like having wrinkles. Fighting with incontinence is perhaps a naive attempt to fight age. Other points, I caregivers and healthcare personnel prepare to respond to the needs of those we have the courage to ask. It is maybe easier to remove a stone. Yes, I definitely agree. But do you think that continence pads can be a solution to this problem? Is pad the solution? It is the easiest the fastest, the worst. We want to wear diapers for the rest of their life. We don't choose to be incontinent. We are not responsible of the problem. We are responsible of the solution. PET is the solution for those who cannot or do not want to get involved because it requires time, commitment, and trained personnel to help these people. Is surgery the solution you mentioned? People are sometimes scared. It's not the fastest solution. It needs commitment and trained personnel, but it works. With no collateral effects, not short or long-term complication, and even in complicated incontinence when surgery is required, it can help to have a better surgical outcome. Spoiler alert! Home rehabilitation with no trainers doesn't work. And then surgery, another solution. Undergoing surgery to improve the quality of life has the same dignity of a surgery to remove a stone. It's scary. We would like to avoid it, but sometimes it is necessary. I understand. And what about timing? Treating people with a severe incontinence doesn't guarantee the same results than a middle incontinence. Timing is crucial. A long history of incontinence leaves skin scares that are a problem in themselves. Not to mention the emotional trauma due to the social isolation that incontinence involves. Talking about rehabilitation, we talk about pelvic floor muscle training. It is common experience that obtained torn muscles depends on the starting tone and the muscle age. The early intervention is crucial for the results. There is a solid literature to support the fact that acting first is important before giving birth, before surgery, prostate surgery. Educating the pelvic floor is an investment in preventing continence as well as treating it. Surgery is scary, I know. Complications are scarier. Unfortunately, this is not an universal discussion, but some complication can be avoided. I absolutely agree. Well, I think that's all for today. So thank you very much, Serena, for sharing your knowledge. Of course, the listeners of this podcast can contact the EAUN anytime for additional information. Thank you for this insightful episode.
We are sure our listeners enjoyed it. To keep up with the latest EAU podcasts and stay informed on neurological advancements, be sure to subscribe to our EAU podcast channel on your favorite podcast app. Until next time, keep learning and stay inspired.